Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Metroid Prime 2 Corruption. Prime 3 Corruption, even. Prime 2 is... Oh, look at that. Technical difficulties within the first 10 seconds of the episode. My audio just cut out and stopped recording, which is horrifying. In the last episode, we took out the shield surrounding Bryo's Leviathan shield. Leviathan seed, even. There we go. This episode, we're going to be flying, flying into the seed to try and find a way to destroy it. Let's roll. So, welcome to Inside the Leviathan Seed. It's a weird place, you've got all sorts of spooky shit. You've got sentient organic structures, phase on tentacles are harmful, but its top can be safely touched. You've got a lot of little scuttling things, one of many, you've got one of many glands that's capable of generating massive quantities of phase on. Parasitic fungus relies on the seed for sustenance. It is saturated with phase on and yet not harmful. Um, does this remind you of anything? It should remind you of two places. If you've watched the rest of this series, it should remind you of Dark Ether, and it should remind you of the Impact Crater on Town 4. Have a think about why that might be. Uh, this is a worthwhile scan that's actually you need to get, uh, which is the Leviathan Door, lower level shield, that's how it goes. Yes, my computer's behaving a little strangely, um, which is why I, my audio suddenly cut out there. The exposed center within the organic mass appears to be its only vulnerable point. Two charge shots will take it out. But yeah, I've been doing a very intensive, like, machine learning, animal tracking task on my computer today, because basically, it's for work, but my work computer doesn't have a GPU capable of actually running the computer vision stuff on it properly. So I've been running it here, and it should have taken about six to seven hours. It's currently, well, I started at 7 a.m. this morning, no, 8 a.m. this morning, and it's now 10 p.m., uh, so it's taken 14 hours and is still staggering on, and as such, because it's still going on in the background, my computer is behaving very strangely, so if the video or anything suddenly just stops, that'll be why. Anyway, time for something spooky as fuck. Time for the big boss of Bryo, the guardian of the Leviathan Seed. This is the Mogonar class war golem. Orbs appear to be the source of power. Let's read it, worthwhile. Corrupted war golem, reanimated and energized with Phazon, relies on stocked energy orbs as a source of power. The orbs themselves have a fragile exterior but contain pure Phazon energy within. This energy must be completely overloaded before it will be destroyed. Eliminating all the power sources is the only way to bring Mogonar offline. So. Target it, and yes, like it said, those orbs are the thing to target. He'll swap it around occasionally, though, which is fun. Keep dealing damage to enough of, to them. The same one aim for. Regardless of where he moves it to, aim for the one that you've done the most damage to. And he's now put it in the crotch orb. There we go. When you've done enough damage to it, switch into hyper mode. And then this is when you can, it said, overload it with phase on, and that's what we need to do here. Well, it said overload it, and it's made a pure phase on. He will move it around that way. Oh, God, I completely cocked that up. Oh, that's the problem with Mogonar. Um, you will really run out of phase on fast if you're not careful, because you, you need to be a bit more careful about these shots than I've been. There we go. We've dealt him damage, though. That's pretty good. So we've done a quarter of his health. So you'll notice he's got phase on shoes now, and my bloody point is gone again. Come on. Come back. There we go. Nope. There we go. Still having that issue. Great. Everything's technically falling apart this episode already. I'm only like five minutes in. Phazon crystals are powering a protective barrier. An explosion near his feet could possibly destroy him. So, wait for him to slam into the wall and then drop some morph ball bombs next to each of his shoesies and he will destroy his Phazon shoes. 
theoretically. There we go. Now we're back again. You'll notice as well, you may have noticed, he has a um, one of these orbs on his backside as well. <laughs> on his backside. But literally on his back. Um, you can ignore it for now. He'll only switch between these front two. Um, while there are front ones, he'll only start switching with the back one when there are no others left. So you don't have to worry about getting behind him until right at the end. We've opened him up again, so let's get in a little bit closer. And oh, you're going to jump around, aren't you? Can you, you, you bloody clown? Ugh, I'm going to get corrupted soon if I'm not careful. As I'm spending too long in hyper mode without... Oh, corrupted. Cannot cancel hyper mode yet, so I've got to blast out the entire energy tank. So, he will once again start juicing up, and we need to take out his shoes once again. Oh, he's charging at me. Um, there's your chance to get one of the shoes, and then the other phase on shoesy there. Yes, wonderful. So, that's the one in the back, you can see. If we get a chance here, it might be worth wailing on a bit, because now he will swap between that one and the front one. So... Obviously, ooh, you kind of want to target it while it's on the front. Um, but there's not a lot you can necessarily do to make it swap or anything. So here, it's more of a case of if you happen to be behind him, target the orb that's on his back. If you're in front of him, target the one that's on his front. You can't really, like I've been doing so far, make sure you keep tar targeting like the same energy orb. Um, so I'm just going to have to basically point at this one and, and wait until I take out whichever orb this is. We've nearly got him, though. And he won't... Oh, he's doing the spooky hands. Oh, yeah, you can shoot them up there. That's not the spooky hands, actually. That's just the, the green shit. That should be that one done. Oh, come on. I swear, if he opens... Oh, boop, 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 okay. Well, let's do some damage to the back orb as well. Unfortunately, when you destroy one orb, the damage he's done to any other orbs, you've done to any other orbs, will be reduced. But at least for now, both of them are near bursting points, so that's at least something. Oh, no, he's doing the spooky hands. Get away from me. So if they grab you, they just do weird things to you. There we go. Right, he's down a little bit. So let's be a little bit more careful with my... Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm careful with my face on, because that's the thing. By, by waiting, you just risk getting corrupted. Um, anyway, that's three of them done. So it's only the one on his back that remains. So, once again, you know the drill. Take out the face on choosies. And second one. Boop, boop, boop. Wonderful. And now we can target the one on... Oh, with the damage on it does stick. That's nice. So now we just need to stay behind him, which is easier said than done, because he's huge. And you just need to use this kind of, like, double-tapping A to remain behind him. Um, and he'll charge into the wall, and there's your moment. He'll be kind of stunned. Well, he'll be bamboozled rather than stunned. And there we go. Getting the phase on in on this back one could be a real bugger, um, just because of the angle again. you just got to stay close to him and wait for the right moment. There we go. I'm going to get corrupted. Yeah, I'm corrupted. Um, but either way, we should be able to get it all into his back anyway. Wonderful. Oh, can't cancel hyper mode shit. Well, doesn't matter. Ah, Mogganar defeated, and yet another way in which Metroid Prime 3 differs from the other two Prime games. In the other, those ones, you only see Samus's helmet if you get like 80% scans or more. In this one, she just takes it off to spew in the middle of the game. Lovely. Anyway, let's take our reward. So we got an upgrade for our armor suit, the Hyper Ball. We had another bit of hyper mode tech. When in hyper mode, press C to enter Morph Ball and then press and hold A to use the Hyper Ball. You can also go into hyper mode while you're already in the ball. So what's the advantage of Hyper Ball? If you hold A, it just wrecks anything remotely nearby you. It's great.
Trio is now saved from further phase on corruption. Thank you, Samus. Your next objective will be Elysia. Though Gore is stationed there, the Leviathan's phase on contamination is still spreading. The impact point is hidden deep within the storm clouds of this planet. You will not be able to reach its location. Instead, you may land near an automated research facility floating high above the surface, where GF Aurora Unit 217 is stationed. Unit 217 has been infected by the corruption virus and is currently offline. I have uploaded a program to your suit that will purge any traces of corruption in the AU and restore its functionality. Once Unit 217 has been restored, it will help us find a way to destroy the Leviathan. We are concerned about Gore ever since he lost contact with us. We hope he is safe. Good luck, Samus. So there we go, objective completed. We have cleared Brio. There's still stuff to get there as we get more upgrades in the game. We will be returning, but we've destroyed its Leviathan. So now we move on to Elysia, the gas giants. And this is a really fucking cool planet. Let's go. So, welcome to Skytown, the floating research facility of Elysia. You get some seriously cool views here. Well, there's the Leviathan over there, unreachable. I really like this, but I can't unthink. Right, someone, and you know exactly who the fuck you are, someone in the comments made an insightful but irritating comment <laughs> where they said, well, I'll see you in a second. Samus, your highest priority is to get Skytown's Aurora unit back online. It will help you find a way to reach the sea. We will upload its coordinates to you now. Proceed with caution. Gore's whereabouts and disposition are still unknown. So yes, as as 242 says, if we open up the map, we will see... There's the Aurora unit, way the fuck over there. So we'll deal with that in a bit. But yes, someone pointed out... They said, my main memory of Metro Prime 3 is that it's very orange. And having been on Brio and having been here, I can see the point. And now I can't bloody unsee it. And there are other worlds in the game. And the next world we go to following this is also fairly orange. And it's just, I, I, it's been stuck in my head for like the last, all through the editing of the last five episodes. And now we're recording tonight. And it's just, you know who you are. And yes, it's a very insightful comment. Well done. But also, I slightly hate you because now my brain is stuck on orange mode. Anyway, we've got a ton of stuff to scan here. Heavy Skytown storage crate has platings that can only be damaged by weapons fire. Um, we got oh, my own gunship. We got these things. Uh, fuel pods. That's not an actual scan. Where are some of my real scans? There's a little dude carrying that thing. There we go. Um, ooh. So this is the Chozo world, by the way, which is why there's a massive uh, Chozo bus representing Uqua Key Architect in Skytown's creation. Then underneath is structural integrity at minimum. Um, severe winds have deteriorated all support structures over time. These are what I'm trying to scan, though. There we go. Your little transportation drones, they're so cute. Uh, transports basic supplies to and from various areas of Skytown, which is great. Um, and there we go, there's the regular storage unit to the side there. Skytown storage units contain ammunition and supplies vulnerable to all weapons fire. Wonderful. Um, not that I need it, because I'm already on full beans, having been in my ship. Inside, there's a few more things to scan. There is... These are cute as well. Aerial repair drone. Automated repair bots. Um, maintenance bot even. Initial activation 132.8 years ago. And they just go around fixing things. they got their little hands. They're kind of cute. Uh, in their own way, I think. Um, you can target them and shoot them. But why would you do that, you heartless, uncaring bastard? Up here is a bit more of an interesting one. This is... 
A data bot used to store historical data, shoots to access information. Spoing. And upon doing that, it becomes law. So, Elysian data dot create decoded. Creators. I am Elysian, descendant of both the Chozo and the First. I am descending. I am facing the last moments of my life and transferring my memories to the data pod. In a way, our chronicle begins nearly one and a half thousand years ago. That is when our noble creators, the Chozo, began to build that which would become our home. A place of exploration and knowledge, floating in the clouds of planet Elysia. A fitting home for its great Chozo builders. They built many linked hovering pods. In time, they formed a net in the skies across the globe, instruments peering out in all directions, studying the cosmos. We did not exist then. Only the Chozo walked these hallowed halls. To the distant stars they looked, and a great many things they discovered, including that which would, spell, which would later spell grim disaster for all. Ooh, foreshadowing. Anyway, there's also, as with every planet, there is its door as well, which is a, which is a scan, apparently. And with that, wow, this is what would have stopped you getting much further in Skytown at this point. Because here, oh, how do we proceed? It's hard to tell. We're stuck in place. Bombs? No, the statue's not moving in response to bombs. What we need to do is, well, if we scan it... Chosen Welder statue appears stuck. Um, because yes, you've got all these Phazon vines around it. Impervious to attack, but gross are vulnerable to Phazon-based weaponry. But they're behind a shield, so we can't get at them with the old Phazon beam, the hyper beam. But we can get them with our newly obtained Hyper Ball! Yeah, so you really can't get very far in Skytown until you've already beaten Bryo. This game is actually, if anything, even less non-linear than the other um, Metro Prime games. So even more linear, I suppose. Ornamental frame appears very fragile. Glasswork is etched with illegible chosen markings. So let's <laughs> destroy them. Uh, but it is the only way to grapple across here. Successfully! No. Yes, fair, it is very orange, but it is also very cool, this huge, like, floating Chozo city. I love the design on Alicia. Anyway, we've got a little scan here. Structure identified, zipline cable. Rail is a transit system between pods. Connect to it using the grapple scheme. Beam, here we go. So we do a bit of an on-rail shooter thing here. You've got these gates. If you don't shoot them out of the way in time, you're going to have a bad day, essentially. You will just... Ow! Oh, I crashed. Oh, I killed a maintenance drone. I don't feel good about that. But yeah, you'll just fall off and then you'll respawn back at the beginning of the zipline and just have to do it again, so... So don't do that, I suppose. You can shoot... As long as you can lead your shots cleverly enough, you can shoot as soon as you can see them, which is quite nice. And here we get to another pod. So if you start looking at the map of Elysia, it tends to be massive. A lot of the distance between us and the Aurora unit is actually just these zip lines. So dis distances look bigger than they are. Time for a new enemy. So, these are... Ow. Tin bots, lightweight android that is easily knocked down. We haven't got much of a way of knocking it down, but we can also just shoot them in the face. That works too, in a sense. Uh, in a very real sense. Um, so, there's a way up there now with a grab, le grab, grab ledge. But it's actually not worth doing, because there's something over on that thing. Um, but we can't get to it right now. We can scan the thing, I suppose. Communication satellite has been looping the same signal for the past 208.3 years. Sounds very good. Um, oh, these things are all... Oh, yes, this is part of the... Here we go. Um, battery unit is connected to holographic projection disks. Unit is offline and in need of repairs. And these are spooky, these panels, just showing Gore's face. And indeed, if we scan them, holographic projection is tied into Skytown's main network. Gore's image just displayed. Yes, that makes me slightly concerned that Gore is in the network. Oh, no, ooh, new thing over there. Oh, and he's disappeared. Ooh, I'll have to scan that later. Um, yes, unlike Rondas, let's hope nothing happened to... Ooh, my computer finished doing its thing that I was talking about at the beginning of the episode. Tracking finished with 96% oh, accuracy. That's pretty good, actually. To say it's tracking a four-hour video of five locusts and just using machine learning to just find out what they look like. Um, so 96% is pretty good. Uh, piston structure produces energy that is used to supply power to the pod engines. Um, yeah, because the engines are obviously how this thing is staying aloft in the atmosphere. 
That thing that flew off, we didn't get to scan it, but don't worry, we'll definitely get a chance. Through here is a new bit of tech to scan as well, this thing on the floor. You'll remember it from Metroid Prime 2, Kinetic Orb Cannon, capable of flying small spherical objects at high speeds. Let's go! So, now we're over on another pod, and once again if we look at the map you can see, yes, how much we actually do traverse space in Skytown surprisingly quickly. Here is one of the most obvious um, uh, missile upgrades to get in the game. It's just sitting there as long as you know how to do a morph ball double jump. You are absolutely fine. And now we head along and into another... What the fuck? Oh, this wasn't what I was thinking of at all. Well, there's a fancy lock which needs simultaneous blast to all targets to disengage locks, which we are no way near capable of. There's some other stuff over here as well. There's some um, alloys within this metal are disvulnerable to heat, high temperature shots could melt it, and there is a morph ball cannon again. Access is blocked, remove the surrounding debris to use it, which we can't do yet in any way, of course. So, let's just grapple over here. But yes, the software I've been using um, is this stuff called, it's called ID Tracker. Oh, we just need to shoot these to avoid them exploding us. And basically the idea is you give it videos of a couple of like, a load of unmarked individuals. So in my case, I've just got five locusts running around for a couple of hours. And it basically not only tracks their positions based on looking at, so they're like dark locusts against a light background and it tracks where they are and keeps track of them. But also it uses machine learning techniques to like keep track of which individual is which. So even if they cross over one another, go twisty up the walls or anything like that, it can always tell which ones are which because it does, well, apparently in my case with 96% accuracy and that's estimated accuracy, I suspect in reality. Another nice easy missile expansion there. In reality, it will probably be much higher than 96 pins. It'll probably be close to 100. I've been very impressed with it so far. Um, but it's, um, yeah, so it keeps track of which one's which. And that's really nice for all of my work, which is to do with why individuals behave differently. Like, why do, why do all individuals, even with locusts, which are simple insects, all individuals don't behave the same? My research is about why that happens and how that happens and this is a really cool tool for it but unfortunately it requires because it's a machine learning thing it requires like a beefy gpu um which my work computer doesn't have but my home computer does um but even with that apparently it's also just not particularly written for tracking it's used to track a lot of individuals for a short period of time rather than a few individuals for fucking four hours um so that's why it's been struggling a little bit but it's finished it only took since 8 a.m this morning and it's 20 past 10 now, but I'm just happy it's done. So also that hopefully means this recording will be stable. I'm going to check that it's all good after this episode, I think. Which we're getting towards the end of. We've just got some stuff going on now. Um, we have got recharge chambers used to hard house and recharge steam bots low on power. We've got a red cable, which can be uh, as pressure to keep security bars locked shut. we got this thing in the middle. Containment door sealed. Faint mechanical sounds can be heard from within. Ooh, spooky. And this thing over here. Vertical traversal unit requires a kinetic charge to activate, currently offline. Yeah, there's loads of stuff in here. Well, let's do the classic. Here's the way out. Let's try and leave. Well, here's the thing that teleported away from us earlier. This is our little... Okay, it's not there at the moment. Well, that's our mini-boss. But hey, for now, we've got steam bots, lightly armed and armoured, rendered inert by high temp hits, which is something we're not capable of at the moment, so we just need to hit them. When you hit them enough, they will collapse onto the ground. And at that point, your man reappears. Or not. Okay, we'll just keep fighting them off for now. We basically need to... There he is. So he'll appear and he'll recharge them or not. He's really not playing ball today. There we go, he's back. Um, so, this is our little boss for now. This is the Steam Lord. Repairs falling speed bots capable of cloaking itself. So, what you need to do here is take out the Steam bots, and they'll crumple into pieces on the ground. Then he'll come around and try and repair them, and at that point, you wail on him with everything you've got. But he's brought a Steam bot back, so we just bring the Steam bot back down again, and we're all good. Let's hyper into him and just do him in quickly. Did I actually do him in, or did he just teleport? I think he had just teleports based on how little health he has left, so... Go on. There we go, he's here. Yeah, so you can't... There we go, got him. So 
So, this is a weird one in that you get just an energy tank from defeating him. This game certainly just gives you energy tanks straight up more than the other ones do. And I think it's because the game really does, in a lot of ways, kind of rely on you using hyper mode. Therefore, um, it has to give you some energy tanks for you to reliably be able to use hyper mode in boss fights and stuff like that. So... I think that's the key difference between this and the other Prime games in terms of how it doles out energy tanks. Anyway, we're actually going to hold it there. Um, not only is it the end of the episode, I just need to make sure the tracking all worked very nicely. Um, so thank you very much for watching. We have defeated Moganar, the boss of the Leviathan Seed in Brio, cleansing Brio of all dis uh, corruption. Look at that, I fucked up the pronunciation or did it differently twice within a few words of one another. Next episode, we are going to be exploring further into Skytown in search of the Aurora unit here and in search of the other hunter, Gore. Thank you very much, and good day.